We're now going to start the forum with the first proposal, LAC 2022-1, unif unified text that applied to both IPv4 and IPv6. Ambassador Jordi Pallet is with us, who will be presenting this proposal, and he has 20 minutes to have fun with this task. Could you please confirm whether you can hear me well? Yes, we can. All right, so let us start with the proposal. We, uh, 10 to 12 minutes will be enough. And then there's an additional slide. Unify IP4 and IPv6 text. This was submitted together with another proposal. If I'm not mistaken, this will be discussed later on. And it was recommended to separate the two in order for the sake of clarity. So although this is version number one, this is something that had already been submitted earlier. Now, what is the situation? We are all aware that the policy manual has evolved over time and IPv6 was incorporated later on in the majority of the RIRs. It has happened that there was some text contained in the IPv4 section, which had to do with all the resources, so not only to IPv6 and, of course, to IPv4, but also to ASN. And when incorporating different chapters in the three types of resources to ASN, IPv4, and IPv6, it was misaligned because apparently for IPv4, different things are requested compared to IPv6. In general, these are issues that are of a more administrative nature. And the staff is requesting this for the three types of resource resources, but it's not adequately reflected in the manual and might lead to conclusion. A further section, which is chapter one, which contains the definitions, but it also contains man, a man, some mandate. So the idea is to subdivide that section or change the title so that it is consistent. I insist that we're not changing anything at all from the operational standpoint of the policy, but adjust, adjusting the manual to the reality, to the context in which these resources are analyzed. These are practically all edit, edits of a edit uh, that are don't go into the essence in different RIRs. The staff doesn't wish to change anything, so we have to do these proposals to make these adjustments. These are just edits. I'm going to divide the proposal into different slides. Slides in the column on the left. In black, in general, you have the current text of each of the chapters. And in blue, you have the proposed changes. But in blue, I highlighted the changes. And obviously, this is at the right of the screen. So the first aspect is chapter one, definitions. And I propose definitions and general mandates. We could do this in two chapters, but if we have chapter one and chapter two, we would have to modify the entire chapter. Either we have one general chapter one and have two subsections, one definitions and the other mandates, but these are edits. I clarify once again. There's one aspect that is only considered in IPv4, namely what documentation should be submitted to request IPv4 resources. It is quite clear that this documentation has to be requested when you request IPv6 resources or even ASN. So we just move this text from the IPv4 chapter to section one on definitions and to change the numbering to the corresponding one. I'm instead, I won't be reading out the text because there are no changes there. We're just moving this text from a section that is specific to IPv4 to a more general one, which applies to all. In addition to that, we have something that is related to geolocation. Geolocation should apply equally to IPv6. It is meaningless to be able to geolocate through IPv4 and not through IPv6. Once again, what we are saying is to correct a, a typo instead of, in Spanish, se publicará, se publicar. It, it, and this will be moved to section number one, 
stating that this is equal for IPv4 and IPv6. Much in the same way, on the IPv4 part, this, it is specified that some of the documents requested to those who are applying for resources, that these are confidential, and will, this will be main, like Nick shall maintain the confidentiality, as is the case of all the RIRs, evidently for reasons of transparency, or as stated by the policies, or even because some of this data has to be published. Now, who is? Some data will have to be published, but the confidential data will continue being confidential. This applies equally to IPv4, IPv6, and ASN. That is why we move this to the general section, which applies to all the resources. Once again, in the IPv4 section, we have a text stating that the requests will be applied without discriminating applic applicants. And no changes occur here. This is just moved to the definition sections or mandate section, whichever name you wish to give it. And this applies to all applications. So all should be treated equally, whether they request IPv4, IPv6, or both. Non-guaranteed routability. This is contained in IPv4 and also in IPv6. Now, because this is a common text, although it has been drafted slightly different, the meaning is the same. So what we are doing here is to change, move this text to the definitions section. So it covers both types of resources, namely IPv4 and IPv6. Now, in this case, the time allocated is different. In IPv6, it's 12, and ASN, it's six months. So here we have to specify what is contained in blue. Because today, if we don't want to change anything, the time period is different for the three. But we don't want to change operational issues with this proposal. I don't know if I duplicated this. Well, yes, this is the IPv6 part. And we said we're going to take it to the definitions section. So having said this, I would have to make a couple of clarifications. And I understand that it is more logical for the staff to submit the impact analysis. And I will respond so it's not too quickly. But I will go give the floor back to the chairs. OK, Jordi, so let's now give the floor to our dear policy officer, Mariela Rocha, who will uh, present the impact analysis. She has 10 minutes for that, and then we'll listen to Jordi's comments about the analysis. Good morning. I hope the presentation, well, we'll wait until the presentation shows up here on the screen. OK, let me tell you the impact analysis that we found as the author presented the proposal and already highlighted the differences between the uh, current version in the manual and what he proposes. So let's go right away to the staff's comments. The staff, well, at the staff, we consider that definitions and general mandates are different things. The definitions must remain as such as definitions. The mandates, general mandates, are uh, statements of the processes that the policy manual indicates how they should be done. It's not an interpretation. So we don't believe that it's appropriate uh, to confuse people, placing them arbitrarily in the same section. On the other hand, as the security and confidentiality is moved to this section, 2.3.2.14, uh, generic definitions, we should explicitly include that that confidentiality applies for the documentation that is provided for request of resources. And this is because there's 
a different type of information that LACNIX receives and that we must um, uh, publish. Um, and so we, we, we think that that should be clearly stated in the proposal. And the last comment is we assume that the author does not intend to um, change the current practices. So we suggest that the drafting should reflect um, that it uh, clarifies the current practice, not changing it. So our recommendations are first that section one definitions should uh, be left only for definitions. Uh, the second recommendation is to establish the criterion with which you would um, put uh, st sentences in the eventual section of general mandates. And third, we suggest that for the security and confidentiality um, item, we should put another text. And there we propose that it could say something like this, LACNIC shall maintain systems and practices that uh, um, see to uh, the uh, and and uh, protect confidentiality of all the, the documentation that is uh, given to uh, LACNIC for justifying the request of resources. And finally, what would be the impact of uh, this uh, policy if it were included? And our analysis is that it has no impact on uh, the uh, uh, systems. Thank you, Mariela. Jordi, you have three minutes. Yes, we are ready. Okay. I don't want to repeat, but let me summarize. I only have to answer two items of the comments by the staff. The third, obviously, is no problem. The first one is distinguishing between definitions and mandates. Let's see. At present, there are already mandates in Section 1. So we um, should understand that when those mandates were uh, approved, uh, they must have understood that it was right. So the current change should be accepted as such. Remember that there's a man mandate on uh, RPKI and AS0. Uh, um, and as I said earlier, this new section would be an editorial change. So I have no problems, and I think that we don't need a new version for that. That is, if we want to change the title of a section one to introduction and under introduction to include a subsection with definitions and another one for mandates, that's an example, just but you could do this in four or five different ways. Well, we could do it like that, of course. Or maybe to put as section zero the, the current um, uh, sections and in the new one to include the mandates or whatever heading we think is more appropriate. Now, as to the second item, as to uh, security and confidentiality, I don't agree with what the staff says because not only do you have to uh, preserve the confidentiality in when you are justifying the request for resources, there are other documents that are not public. For instance, sometimes you ask people for to send uh, a copy of the passport to justify who is requesting um, the resource. So as the suggested uh, um, text says, uh, for instance, this is uh, uh, not uh, um, it, it, it this is uh, applies it's it's not a mandatory thing anyway i insist that this is an editorial change maybe we might solve it with a text that i proposal adding except when lacnig has the obligation of publishing because that is the uh, Oh, what doesn't fit here, because there are texts that out of transparency or how the policy manual does it, for instance, the publication in who is LACNIC needs to have the option of publishing it. So I think that we could solve it with that. I insist that we are speaking of editorial changes. And this is important for those of you who don't know it, because if the proposal reaches consensus, these changes could be applied if accepted by the, the chairs in the second consensus. And with this, I think that that would be all for me. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Now we are going to start the discussion. Let's uh, make the most of it. We invite everybody to share their doubts or the comments uh, here on the mic, um, or if you are online, use the Q&A panel in Zoom. 
Remember, you can speak your own language. And uh, for each question, you have two minutes. And we have three minutes uh, for uh, the uh, author to answer back. So your first, uh, first, your name and the question. I'm Pedro of the University of uh, Paraná. About slide six, could you show it again so that we can see it? Slide six. Jordi, could you show slide six, please? Yes, let me share it again. I think that you should be able to see it now. Yes, indeed, there it is. That's another item that the staff said, and I see a problem there. Because in the original text, as it says there, it's, it's like for to justify the distribution of the documentation. And even if you say that, that there it says, for example, or for instance, I don't see that that fixes things. Because before that, it says all information. And that includes the autonomous syst uh, system number and uh, the provider's numbers. And that, um, it, so uh, the term confidentiality is very important. So I don't agree that the, this text is right and that I don't think that this would fix anything. Well, precisely. Jordi, wait a second. Yes, thank you. Now, yes. Jordi, you have the stopwatch. OK, yes, that's why I said that one of the possible solutions would be to add at the end of that sentence. I don't have it on the screen. Let me see whether I can uh, uh, stop sharing, because I don't see. I said that one of the solutions is to add, except when LACNIC has the obligation of publishing. And I think that that would solve the problem. OK, I think I think that you still see it on the screen in the last phrase. Well, you, you could add, except when LACNIC has the obligation of publishing. Well, thank you, Jordi, for your comment. In Montevideo, we have Franco Cabrera of the staff. Franco, good morning. Are there any questions in the Q&A panel? Good. In the Q&A, I, I have no questions, not yet, nor do I have any raised hands. OK, let's wait uh, just uh, a couple of minutes to see whether we receive any other comments or questions while while uh, uh, Yoda Patara comes, uh, Ricardo Patara comes to the microphone. I, I think I, I agree with the concept in general, but I don't agree with the concrete text because of the comment that Pedro said and also for the reasons that the staff mentioned. The fact that because it changes the meaning, because in, in the past you don't have the information that all the information should be treated confidentially, confidentially, and it's a change in the proposed text. And although the author insisted several times that it doesn't change things, yes, it changes things and it has an impact, so I'm against the text. Nor do I think that by adding, uh, if the author adds something, uh, for instance, that the information that uh, LACNIC sees that it's necessary to publish, it's not the same. I think that there's no need to say that all uh, information should be kept confidential. When you give information to LACNIC uh, for the request, uh, you, it already says that it's confidential, and LACNIC is already aware of what information must be treated uh, uh, confidential. So I, I don't th see the need to say that all information should be confidential. Thank you, Ricardo. Jordi, would you like to answer? You have three minutes. Well, I would be repeating myself. I think it's absolutely clear that except when LACNIC has to publish the obligation of publishing, that would solve the thing. But maybe we should ask a lawyer. Franco, OK. Franco, anybody else in the Q&A or raising their, hand, their hands? No, not yet. Nobody's raising their hands. No questions in the Q&A. Well, we have a question here in the microphone. Where do you come from? Oscar Robles. Sid or is he die? 
Well, I'm Oscar Robles of the staff of LACNIC. I just want to reiterate the part of the definitions and mandates. Beyond the fact that there are some mandates in the definitions, I think that past errors do not warrant the repetition of new errors. If that is the case, I think that the suggestion by the author proposing an adjustment on separating the definition sections from mandates, it would be very good. Now, and uh, I think that a more current uh, term for documents like this would be desirable, not so much mandate. It would be desirable, not so much a uh, it would be a mandate. Jordi, you have three minutes. Well, I used mandates because it was they suggested in the impact analysis. But you say, for me, it's the same to use the, the t term mandates or whatever. I think that I agree with what Oscar has said. So there's not much that I can add. Maybe the easiest way with the least impact would be that instead of giving the numbers of the section of definitions from one to zero, so you don't have to renumber the entire manual. But I repeat that it's a purely editorial issue. Thank you, Franco. Anybody in the online uh, microphone Q and A? No, n nobody. So let's give the floor to uh, the room. Percival, Nick B R. I believe that uh, any policy and all policies initially need uh, to uh, discuss principles. And I think that we are focusing on too many details. And uh, we go deeper and deeper into the details, and some things have not been clarified. For instance, what do we understand by public data and private data? For instance, some time ago, we, we, for some time, we haven't had the numbers, the names of the physical persons. That is, we didn't uh, uh, deliver the resources to a person with, that is a personal data. But if they use the personal data to request uh, a public uh, resource, then that is no longer private. Now, before doing that, we must clarify that the data in the registry system is public and that it is necessary. Uh, there's a legitimate interest to use the data not the interest for business or uh, a business or a, a corporation, but it's interest of the system that needs some uh, data to be identified as uh, to the holder of the service, uh, who is the holder of the resource in the case of IP. If there are any personal data, and that would be very personal in some aspects in that case, considering the legitimate uh, general interest, then they turn into public data. That is why you need to clarify that. And from then on, we'll be able to put in each situation, because, because I see this is lacking when describing this. I think some paragraphs should be included on principles, how to define whether we agree or not. We don't even know what the specific topic is and what we'll have in the future, but that is why we resort to principles. Jordi, would you like to make any comments? Yes. I think that what was mentioned, if I understood correctly, is that it is still pending to define which data are public and which are confidential. But this is not what this proposal is modifying. This is a pre-existing situation. I think this should be included in a different proposal. Nevertheless, from my standpoint, and precisely because of what the comments made on general interest, when a private, something is private and becomes public and it's no longer confidential, it is in that sense that when I add the line, except when LACNIC would decide to solve this. LACNIC is subject to the Uruguayan legislation, which has a data protection legislation. And it is in that sense that I think there would be no additional inconvenient. 
Thank you, Jordi Franco. No comments in the Q&A and no participants here. Anyone else who wishes to take the floor? Feel free to do so. Franco, let us know if you see anything in the QMA. I'm looking at the Zoom in the Q&A. Don't make comments in the general chat. Please ask your comments or make your questions in the Q&A or raise your hand in the Zoom and you, your microphone will be unmuted. Please remember that any conversation made in the chat won't be registered. And if so, this is not taken into account as an official channel for the consensus. So please use the button to raise your hand or the Q&A box to write your questions or comments. So everybody is shy today, maybe because this is the first policy proposal. And they had a good breakfast. So, so now let us start measuring the temperature. I'd like to ask, uh, thank you all for your comments. Thank you, Jordi, for your presentation. We'll now proceed to measure the temperature in the room to take this into account when we measure consensus. Let me remind you that although the Zoom tool shows this as being voting, let me remind you that this is not voting. It just helps the moderators to understand what the community feels about the proposal. But consensus, once again, will only be assessed based on the comments made in this public policy forum and based on what is expressed in the mailing list. So I'd like to ask the technical guys to put up the poll and LACNIC staff will be counting the people who express their opinions from their seats. There will be three options in the Zoom poll. You'll have the policy title, and if you are in favor, in against, or abstention. So please select your option. Those of you who are following us by Zoom and those who are here in the room, please raise your hand if you are in favor of this proposal. Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you are in favor. Don't feel shy. Nothing will happen. We would like, as we said initially, that those who are against also say why you are against, because this is relevant. Thank you. You can lower your hand here in the room. Once again, here in the room, please raise your hand, those who are against this proposal. Once again, we would like to know why you are against. If you wish, we can enable the microphone, and otherwise you can express your opinion in the mailing list. Yes, you can lower your hands. Raise your hands, the abstentions. So thank you very much to all of you the staff and the technical guys will give us the results. So this proposal, LAC 2022 1 version 1, unify IP6 and IP4 text, will finish the eight-week discussion on Mar May the 25th, 2022. So as from May the 25th, 2022, and two weeks later, moderators 
who will be the chairs will have to decide whether this proposal has reached consensus or not. Ariel, I would like to have 10 seconds to make comments. I'd like to insist on what you have said. It is important both for the community and for the chairs that those who have abstained express their opinion, particularly those who are against. Please let us know why. Because this is useful for the chairs to decide whether there is consensus or not, and for those who have made the proposal so that we understand the details in addition to the comments that have already been made. Thank you, Jordi. So exceptionally, we have time. So if we should have some further discussion. Pero, Jordi, I agree with the spirit of the change in the policy. But the way it is now, it cannot be accepted. So my propose, my idea, my suggestion is to prepare a new version. Jordi, understand you won't add much more. Well, simply to see the details if these are editorial issues or not. Franco, do you have anything in the Zoom? No, no hands have been raised. So a comment here in the room. I think this is more the semantics on the policies. And I think it's good. This is about semantics and to correct based on the uh, suggestions made by our colleagues. Thank you. Anyone else? Comments in favor, comments against? It's always interesting to listen to those who are against. So that would be it. And because we finished with the first of the four proposals, we now invite Sandra, who will announce the coffee break. So how are you doing with the bingo? Uh, 